What's the difference between one of these and one of these? If they look the same, taste the same, and cost the same, what would make you prefer one over the other? Impossible Foods is perhaps the highest profile fake plant-based meat company. This year, they want to go mainstream, appearing in Burger Kings and grocery stores across the country. Celebrity chef Dave Chang already serves the burger in Momofuku Nishi, and Questlove recently released an Impossible Philly cheesesteak sandwich. The company also got another $300 million in funding and launched in Singapore just this year. We're now looking at a world of impossible sliders, dumplings, and pizzas. How did we even get here? 200 years ago, um, people decided, you know what, we need a, a way to power transportation uh, without a horse. As soon as something better came along, the number of horses being used for transportation dropped by an order of magnitude. It turned out that what people loved was power transportation and not that the power came from a horse. And all our evidence with respect to meat is exactly the same. It's about deliciousness, it's about nutritional value, it's about convenience, affordability. It's not about being made from a dead animal. You have to break free from that old technology completely and now the possibilities for improvement are vastly greater. Let's think about how we can not only do that just as well, but do it better. You know, many vegetarians will try to convince you that meat doesn't taste good, or they'll try to convince you that you should deprive yourself because although meat tastes good, um, you need to deprive yourself because it's bad, bad, bad. So they either try to shame you uh, or they try to get you to deny your experience. And Impossible comes along and Pat says, no, meat tastes amazing. Um, kudos to you vegetarians, we're not talking to you. And here is this other product that we're creating that will give you everything that you like about meat, but produced without the harm. Impossible's headquarters is in Redwood City, California, just down the road from Palo Alto and Stanford University. For decades, Stanford was home to noted biochemist Pat Brown. In 2011, he founded Impossible Foods. Impossible sells itself as a tech company, not just a food company. Its goal is not just to make burgers, it's to understand scientifically how meat works and how to recreate it. The way we make our food is a technology. It's a terrible prehistoric technology. And our mission is to completely replace animals as a food technology globally by 2035. So I'm gonna step back and kind of make sure you understand what flavor is. Flavor is both molecules that interact with your tongue, but it doesn't tell you what you're eating. That's where your nose comes in, either directly smelling it, or actually as you chew down, it goes back of your throat, and retronasally it will bind to the receptors in your nose. What this does is identify all of those molecules that would be binding to your nose, and be able to give us both a chemical profile and a smell associated with it. So me or someone on my team would sit here and smell each molecule coming out um, and give it a description. We have buttery, plastic, nutty, green, fruity. Combining all of these is what creates that flavor of beef. A different set will create the flavor of pork or the flavor of chicken. For us, this is kind of our chemical ID that we want to be able to create. But how we actually solve the problem is we say what created those aromas in the first place. The key component is heme. So heme is what binds to iron and makes a steak bright red in color. And so we identified that heme and meat drives the metallic flavor in the raw state. And upon cooking, it reacts with those simple nutrients to create all of those molecules that this identified in meat, it can create them all. Impossible is run like a tech company, branded like a tech company, and debuted its biggest product, the Impossible Burger 2.0, at this year's CES. Some of the firm's top leaders are Silicon Valley veterans like Dennis Woodside. He's the recently appointed company president and was formerly at Dropbox and Google. I think there are aspects of a tech company that we have. You know, one is this ability to iterate constantly on our product. We're already working on the next iteration of our burger product. We can tweak it in many different ways to accommodate different applications and uses. So that fast-moving, iterative approach to product development, I think, is similar to what I saw at Google and at Dropbox. We're still learning stuff all the time. We're, we still think very much about building this platform, building a complete toolkit of of scalable, sustainable plant ingredients that we can pick from to optimize any of the foods and so forth. Impossible's latest product is sausage meat, which we tried in their test kitchen. 
we're just going to go through, walk through a, a couple of different things to show you the versatility of the product. Ultimately, it performs exactly the way any sausage product would. So uh, we're going to be walking through some shumai and uh, breakfast sausage uh, sandwich. But ultimately, anything you would use uh, sausage for, you can really fold this into. And it's a great analog to provide for um, these different dishes. With all the spices carrying the flavor, it'd be hard to distinguish the product from a bodega breakfast sandwich, just like it's easy to confuse impossible burger patties from gray fast food meat. In fact, the sausage ingredients are only subtly different from the burgers. One thing that I keep hearing from people here is that you want the meat to be, to be better than animal meat, essentially. I'm curious what you see are the potential ways that your meat can, be, can taste better or have a better sensory experience than an animal meat. There's almost something that doesn't make sense, right? How, if you're trying to be like a beef hamburger, how can you be better than it? The best you can be is as good, or as good as the best one, right? It may be that we get better by tasting a little different, be a new kind of meat they can add to their diet. What would that even look like? Are you kind of suggesting uh, this is sort of a new genre of meat that you might make? Um, right now, some people like bacon on their hamburger. Okay, what if we could make something that had some aspects of pork flavor and some aspects of beef flavor? One of the things about humanity is like we keep changing the things we want and what, what makes sense to us in terms of style or food or whatever else. Um, and so as our product gets out there, and there'll be others as well, people will be more open and they'll think of stuff. So let's go back to those two burgers from earlier. They raise an interesting question. What is meat anyway? Yeah, I mean, meat is an experience, right? So uh, one of the central brainstorms of plant-based meat is that meat is made up of lipids, aminos, minerals, and water. That's it. Everything in meat also exists in plants. So anything that's made of animals, you should be able to replicate it and maybe even do better. But why go through all this trouble to reverse engineer a product that already exists in nature and that we've been consuming for millennia? One thing that, that we talked about but we didn't really have enough time to do last time is to go a little bit deeper into what the world looks like 20 years from now, because that's something that people don't think about. If you could just get rid of cows, if you could snap your fingers and, and make every single cow on earth just disappear, which I would do in a heartbeat, you would have solved 75% of, of the problem, probably. Meat produced conventionally has myriad harms. At the most basic level, the two big questions in agriculture are one, how do we feed 9.7 to 10 billion people by 2050? Uh, and two, what do we do about climate change? So to solve an impending environmental catastrophe, Impossible and other companies like Beyond Meat are starting with selling burgers. Uh, right now, Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods are the two standouts. Beyond Meat plus Impossible plus all the rest are a half of 1% of what the meat industry brings in. So there's a lot of room for additional companies that can come along and give uh, Impossible and Beyond a run for their money. You know, Pat's vision has always been that this is a product for everyone. We don't want price to be a barrier. Uh, we don't want availability to be a barrier. Anywhere you get a burger, you ought to be able to get an Impossible burger. And we're, we're on our way, but it's still pretty early in that journey. Impossible has venture capital, celebrity clout, an ethical business narrative, and a nearly passable meat product. Right now, it's on the cusp of going mainstream. But whether Impossible succeeds in wiping out animal products ultimately depends on whether we'll end up picking it on the menu. Can plant meat be more than a novelty product and become something we eat day in, day out? If meat alternatives become cheap, tasty, and available, how much will we care that they're not natural? <laughs> <laughs>